Guess where I am, everybody. Uh, we are here now. There, there they are. It's almost showtime. We're about to see the image. And I hope they don't kick me out. Let's do this. Well, here I am with the man himself, Dr. Alan Stern, the principal investigator of New Horizons. Congratulations, Alan. Hey, on thank the, you. On the I really appreciate that. Uh, a lot of surprises today, I suppose. Uh, what do you think was your biggest surprise? Uh, well, e everything about Ultima is surprising, but I think what surprised me most so far is that we've learned that we're really seeing a primordial contact binary, which was one of our greatest ambitions. But you know, uh, uh, just going to one Kuiper Belt object, we couldn't be sure um, whether we'd get that or not, and our dreams are, you know, realized. Uh, you know, I, I, it's funny, I studied binary, contact binary stars. Yeah. I never even thought about contact binary planetesimals. Uh, obviously, this is something that you expect to see, but can you tell me why do you think there are so many of these contact binaries? Well, it's, it's interesting because years ago, like when I was in graduate school in the late 80s and early 90s, when, in that period, I worked on planetary formation theories and wrote computer models. We thought things formed by a process called binary accretion. And binary accretion does play an important role in later stages, but it doesn't work in the early stages when small things have to come together. Um, these newer models that are called pebble accretion models um, predict these contact binaries to be very prevalent, and you would never get them through the other process because this is about gentle collisions and kind of a hailstorm that builds up these quasi-spherical bodies. And then ultimately the larger lobe type things can eject the little guys. And as they're ejecting the little guys, the conservation of energy and angular momentum draws the two together until they're in contact because they're losing energy relative to each other by uh, exporting it with the ones they're ejecting. That's amazing. And, and so all this is basically proves that this model has it, it, this is a very convincing, um, I won't use the word proof, but this is a very convincing piece of evidence that these models are on the right track. That's, that's so great. So it must be tremendously gratifying just to sort of, just to see all this theoretical work coming to fruition right before our eyes, uh, literally right before our eyes back there is the image of Ultima. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a little biased, but you know, uh, this is extremely important science, human beings understanding not only the formation of our solar system, but other solar systems. And it's an enormous enterprise like particle physics. You know, um, uh, this is nearly a billion dollar experiment to go all the way to the Kuiper Belt, $800 million. Um, why shouldn't the New Horizons team get the Nobel Prize? Perfect. Why shouldn't you? Yeah. Seriously, go New Horizons. There you go, go New Horizons. Well, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I know you're very busy, but Alan, Thank I, you. I, and to let you know, I still owe you a beer from five years ago when you helped our astronomy uh, workshop for writers. So I owe you that it. beer. Just not a five-year-old beer. No, it won't be a five-year-old beer, but now I think I probably owe you like a whole case. Because um, I, I can drink a case of beer all the uh, time. Oh, time. I'd have a couple. I'd be honored. All right, all right, man. We'll do that. Thanks so much, my friend. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Alan Stern, everyone. There he goes. <laughs> All right. Just want to say Mallory Kinchek. Ma Mallory Kinchek. Yes. And what's your role in the project, Mallory? I'm a grad student just participating in the Ultima Thule flyby. This is a beautiful, beautiful model. How did you build it? Uh, the inside is a just styrofoam on either side, and then both pieces are covered in air dry clay, and then the two pieces are adhered together using a dowel in the middle. You, you got such incredible detail on this model. You even have the double divot as shown in the photograph behind you. Uh, I, I, I'm really impressed. So uh, this was not 3D printed. Uh, so how, how much of this would you say is a, a faithful depiction? How much of it would we say is artistic in interpretation? It is, it is interpreted from accurate images. 
We... <laughs> you did darn good. You did darn good. Really? You did amazing. I, I, you know, I wanted to add some craters. Like, we don't know if there are craters yet. We can't really interpret what some of these features are just yet. And when we get more high resolution data, then we'll be able to... Maybe I'll make a second model of this because this will be dry by then. Um, and it'll be a little more accurate. And she put it up here. Yeah. I mean... Look at this. Look at that. That's just beautiful. That is just lovely. Wow. Well, I, I can't wait to see version two after tomorrow's images are, are created, <laughs> are released. Thank you again, Mallory. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Well, you saw it here. When I saw it here, uh, I am just thrilled to have had such a wonderful time today here at Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory. We got our first gorgeous image of Ultima today. And even though that's a very uh, fuzzy image, it's still gorgeous compared to what we had to work with leading up to this moment. But tomorrow, it gets even better. We get even a higher resolution from much closer to Ultima than the, today's image was made. So I hope you'll join me tomorrow. I will be back here cutting together another video. Uh, but first, I need to cut together this video. So have a good night, everybody. And remember to keep watching the skies.